well if you didn't figure out why Dean uh, performed How Great Thou Art to Danny Boy. It's St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Patty's Day to everyone. Um, you know, this story of St. Patrick is, you know, it's story about him as a saint is not that well known, although this holiday is probably the most celebrated saint's day um, of all. And um, it's kind of hard to separate some of the facts from the myths about St. Patrick and what he stood for. But here's some information, a little bit of trivia for you to know. So why do we wear green on St. Patrick's Day? Why is green such an important color? The green shamrocks, green beer, which I'm sorry, I can't even fathom why people can drink something. <laughs> but anyway, because the um, Irish flag has three colors, green, white, and orange. And many say that the green represents Catholicism, orange represents Protestant, Protestantism, and white is the symbol of peaceful coexistence. And since St. Patrick is a Catholic saint, and um, the color green is associated with him. The shamrock, uh, it's believed that St. Patrick taught about the Christian concept of the Trinity using um, a three-leaf clover. The banishing of snakes, great story. <laughs> but it's generally accepted that Ireland never had snakes. Um, some say that it's symbolic of the conversion of pagan traditions. So the driving out of snakes was the driving out of pagan traditions to Christianity. But I'll um, cover this later. But just a side note right away is that it was not a forceful conversion, uh, which I know the Catholic Church uh, historically uh, did in uh, many parts of the world. So about St. Patrick himself and why his story might tie into this topic that I'm exploring tonight of gifts from challenges. So St. Patrick was uh, actually a Roman citizen born into a life of luxury in Great Britain. And apparently he was quite the self-indulgent adolescent but age 16, he was kidnapped by pirates and sold into slavery in Ireland. And he was there for six years where he endured just absolute brutal conditions. He you know, um, was given the task of watching over sheep. Uh, and as you can imagine, throughout the year, the weather isn't necessarily very conducive to that. And there were all kinds of hardships that he uh, endured as a slave. And during that time, apparently, although he had uh, been an atheist, he claims to have heard the voice of God. So he became aware of this greater presence. He managed to escape and get back home to Great Britain. But the suffering that he endured led him to actually want to go back to Ireland to help eliminate the suffering of those he left behind. So his work, his ministry, when you know, he was working to abolish some of the pagan traditions, it was to abolish slavery, human sacrifice, bondage of Irish women. And so it was to try to establish greater kindness, greater um, equity for all, greater uh, self-respect or respect of others. And so the, the experience of being enslaved awakened this compassion and caring for others who are subjected to those kinds of conditions. And as I said, when offering different options to the pagan traditions, he spoke from the heart, which moved others. It drew people to him as opposed to him trying to force this teaching on others. So I think this story really speaks to this idea that even in our most difficult challenges, we can transform those experiences into blessings, that those challenges represent opportunities 
for us to grow and evolve in consciousness and to be blessed eventually by them, even though it may not feel like it in the moment, and to bring forth blessings into the world. So in the science of mind, we say over and over again, we emphasize that God's nature of pure goodness, goodness in every way we can know it, every way we can experience it, every way we can express it, lies in all of us, fully and equally, but it isn't necessarily in full expression that, you know, we are given free will to discover that divine nature for ourselves, and so we don't automatically just know our oneness with God and know our oneness with one another, and our false beliefs of being separate from God, separate from each other, create negative conditions in our lives and in the world, and those conditions create discomfort, pain, and suffering. There's no question about that. There's no question that while we say that potential of God is in everything, the fact that it isn't fully realized um, it, you know, gives rise to many, many difficult and painful situations. But unlike many traditions that teach that the suffering that we incur is imposed to us by God, we teach that they're just the natural consequence of our error thinking, of all the ways that we buy into ideas of lack and limitation and not sensing the presence of the divine in ourselves and others. But because our core nature is good, because whether or not we are feeling aligned with it or recognizing it, our core nature is God's nature, it's good, and that goodness in us always seeks to experience good. So that divine nature is going to impel us to find ways to move out of our suffering, to awaken to that goodness in us, and to transmute our challenges, anything that's causing us any pain and suffering, into something positive. So an example would be that the experience that we might have of feeling lonely or unlovable or unworthy, obviously that's not a good feeling. That causes suffering. Loneliness isn't a great state of mind to be in, right? It causes us to look deeper and eventually awaken to that part of us that knows itself to be loving, that feels that vibration of love, that accepts that we are lovable and to call forth greater love into our lives. The thing is that once we've been through any kind of negative experience, once we've known what it's like to feel separate from God or some aspect of God's nature, and then to eventually awaken to the truth of that, that wasn't true. There was this presence in me that was greater than what I was going through. We now have a gift to share with others who may be suffering in the way that we were suffering prior to our spiritual growth. So St. Patrick evolved from being indifferent to the inequity of others to actually experiencing that, and that caused him to evolve in consciousness as a result of those experiences. So from there, he became the voice an example to others to call forth that greater love, that greater justice for all. He went from a place of darkness, that was his human experience of darkness, into actually being the source of light in the world. So let's be honest, when we're in the middle of our human challenges, it's kind of easy to get overwhelmed by them, right? Our first reaction isn't like, oh, oh, a blessing is coming my way. That's, that's not, at least for me, my knee-jerk response. You know, we tend to feel at the mercy of those circumstances, right? This is when you all go, mm, very good, yes, thank you. <laughs> but when we remember that the suffering of this challenge that it's creating is simply to help us awaken to a greater realization of God's goodness 
a, a, a presence that's greater than any challenge that we might be going, you know, going through at this time. We can reorient our thinking from a sense of being victimized by the situation to looking in the direction of what's the gift? You know, what am I to learn here? What can I gain from this that will help me not only get through it, but then come out on the other side transformed in a really positive way? In a sense, we are really looking for the blessing, the gift. We're looking for something positive in the midst of something really negative. And we're looking for what it is that we'll experience, what aspect of God's nature we'll experience more fully as we come out of that situation that we will then be able to share, that we will have something that is of value to others. So I was uh, speaking this morning with a friend who has experienced years, years and years of sobriety thanks to the 12-step program. And you know, as we were talking afterwards, I reflected on you know, the brilliance of that program that has just helped so many and that is really very spiritually based. And one component of it is that those who gain sobriety can then become sponsors for others while still maintaining their own sponsors. So it's like on some level you can know that, okay, I have this challenge that I'm facing and I can reach out to others for support, but as I go through the process, even though I may still need support, I can be of support to others every step of the way that I feel that I rise above this pattern of addiction, I can be that example and inspiration to others. You know, the idea that those who work through the challenge of addiction not only gain sobriety, but uh, can be example of you know, what, what's possible to others, that that really speaks to no matter where we are, there's that divine nature in us that's greater, that always some, has something of value to give to the world. And so this friend was mentioning to me that she's currently struggling with addiction to sugar. Now, nothing like you know, the effects on it are nothing like what alcohol did to her life years back. And yet she's seen that this is not um, something that's supporting her in having uh, her greatest experience of health. And she really, really has found it to be a struggle. But in the middle of that struggle, she said that as much compassion as she's always had for those people that she's sponsoring, Going through that right now, that sense of addiction to something that she would like to be able to get over and how challenging that can be has just enhanced the level of compassion that she has for others. So right there, while she's working through this challenge, each step of the way, she's gaining something that is a gift to others. See, recognizing the good that's to be realized from our challenges and the blessings that we'll have gained when we pass through, on, through them, move on, and then passing that on to others keeps us focused on God's goodness that's greater than the human challenges we face. You know, we've been asked to face and move through a lot of challenges over the past year, if you haven't noticed. And right from the beginning, I remember when this whole pandemic started and things had to shut down and we had to you know, uh, adapt entire new ways of living, uh, adapt to so much change, people right away were starting to talk about, but look at some of the blessings that are coming forth. I mean, initially, being in L.A., the, the, the smog that went away, the freeways that freed up, people learning to be creative and find 
ways to deal with the situation, how to stay in touch when, and, and also recognizing the blessing of relationships now that we're told we can't get together the way we used to, suddenly seeing the value of those relationships and being able to be with people that we took for granted. So there have been many, many gifts that we have gained along the way and that, you know, we're probably still faced with challenges. It's, you know, we're not all the way through this and I, I know many are still feeling challenged by it. But what I would do is I'd encourage us all to keep asking, what are the blessings that I personally, what are the blessings that I have gained? I guarantee you that any way that you found to adapt in these times, you have learned something about yourself, about that potential of God that's greater than the challenge. You know, and ask ourselves, what greater blessings can I gain and then pass on to others? You know, I, I think a lot of us, I certainly, myself, I'm feeling a sense of relief as these vaccines are being rolled out and a sense that, boy, there really is light at the end of the COVID tunnel, as many people say. But, you know, let's not lose sight of the ways that we came to know God's potential in us that was greater than the challenges that we faced. And let's keep looking for the blessings that we can continue to call forth as we go forward. Let us remember the greatness, you know, that presence in us that we can turn and say, how great thou art, because it does move us through all of our human challenges into some greater experience of good. And so I invite us to take a moment to just turn inward. And I invite you to call to mind any challenge or difficulty that you're currently facing. It could be challenges associated with the adjustments that we're still having to make to our day-to-day -day lives. But whatever the challenge may be, ask yourself, what aspect of God's nature am I feeling that isn't, is not being expressed? What am I feeling disconnected from? Knowing that that aspect of God's nature resides within you, imagine yourself being beyond the challenge and it's being more fully expressed. So whatever that quality is, whether it's love, joy, abundance, respect, kindness, health, wholeness, imagine how now that you're beyond the challenge, you have an ever greater appreciation of that quality of God in your life. You really know how valuable it is, how important it is. And imagine yourself now appreciating and sharing this aspect of God's nature in you more expansively. Because you felt what it's like when we're disconnected from that. And so you are now that blessing to pass it on to others. And I invite you to give thanks for the greater knowingness of God's nature that's greater than any of your human difficulties and that you're coming to know and that you will be able to express more fully as a result of moving through and beyond this challenge. And so from this place in consciousness, Let's join together in prayer. Absolutely knowing that that one life, that one power, that one pure vibration of pure love, infinite intelligence, infinite creativity is the life out of which everything is created and that lives and moves and has its being throughout all creation, including through and as each and every one of us. We are all incarnations of God filled with God's nature, and that truth 
is the truth for all beings everywhere. And so let us join in knowing that that presence of God is changeless and where there is any struggle around the idea of change on this human plane. Let us know that things in this plane are temporary, yet the nature of God, out of which everything comes into being, is permanent. It's birthless, it's deathless. We all stay interconnected in it in this life and beyond. And any things that leave us that we so loved and valued in our lives, be it beings, be it activities, be it our capacity to participate in certain things, in certain ways, whatever that change may be that we're struggling with, let us know that God's nature is there to be experienced in some new way. Where there is any experience of dis-ease or discord, we know that that quality of God, of perfect health and wholeness, lies at the center of each and every one of us. And as we embrace that truth, healing occurs whether it be physical health, mental health, that nature of God is there to restore us and to move us into those greater experiences of well-being. Let us remember that that nature of God is absolutely creative and is always seeking to give of itself unto itself through us. And so as we open to that vibration of creativity, I know we are guided to those perfect right places to uniquely express our God nature and for our ways of expressing it to be valued and appreciated and for us to be fulfilled. Let us remember that that nature of the divine is infinite and so where there's any human experience of lack or limitation, we open to the truth that we are one with a source that is there to provide for our every need and beyond. And as we do so, we are abundantly supplied and we are able to generously give to life. And let us finally remember that that vibration of God at its core is pure love. And as we remember that that pure love lives within us, we move into a greater experience of self-love, love for others, love for, that we can bring forth into everything we do. And knowing that that nature of love is always for greater good, let us set our intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world. Let us know we are feeling the impulse of God for a greater realization of itself in all these situations. And knowing that God is in all these situations, we can know that good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that they all lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart just filled with gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. I'm only 
So this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. Just a reminder of ways that um, you can give that. Uh, you can always um, call into the church after service for about 30 minutes after service. We'll be here if you want to do a donation over the phone via credit or debit card. Um, right now you should be seeing a link where you can give online. Uh, if you're not able to click on that, it's nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page, where if you don't want to have to remember to do this every week, you can also uh, set up one-time recurring uh, donations. And uh, you can also text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. And of course, you can still send in your checks, but um, so, so grateful for all the ways that you continue to support us. So with this idea of giving, let us hold our hands to our hearts as we say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, as we bring our service to a close, I would like to say thank you to all of those who've been of service this evening. Uh, let me start out there in virtual land. Uh, practitioners holding vigil this evening, thank you to Gail Pallott and Liz Racy. And by the way, let me announce this right now, since Liz is holding vigil, we have the incredibly exciting news that her husband, Paul, has been nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for the movie. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty exciting, huh? So I know I was thrilled. <laughs> um, thank you to our Zoom team out there, Brenda Jordan, Lynn Romanowski, and Ray Regan. Uh, on Facebook Live, once again, thank you, thank you, Melissa Allen. Here in the sanctuary, thank you, Adam, one more time for being back there to make sure we're seen and heard up here. To our technical team that I know has been watching the internet connection very carefully all night. <laughs> yeah, Blair's pulling his hair out. <laughs> thank you, Doreen and Blair. Uh, just, I know your consciousness is what got us through it. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> to Nikki, who is on second camera, 
and who are absolutely awesome. I will never tire of you doing the Danny Boy, How Great Thou Art. Thank you, Dean and Sam. Just perfect. And um, thank you, Sam, for that amazing shamrock. <laughs> Did they get to see it? Well, it's all blingy and glittery. Okay, yay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so a couple of announcements. Again, just a reminder as far as the donations. Uh, so we'll be in the church office for 30 minutes after service. If you want to do your donation over the phone, 818-762-7566. The um, link online is nhcrs.org forward slash give. Uh, yes, and that takes you straight to the donation page, and the number that you can send the text to with the word give is 818-457-3419. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service with, uh, over Zoom. If you're on Facebook Live right now, uh, just uh, go to our website and connect with us on Zoom, and we can line you up with a practitioner who will pray with you in a private breakout room. Uh, you can email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org, or you can call into the church to leave a voicemail message. Uh, it's option four on the phone menu, and those voicemail messages and emails are checked every evening, and the requests are sent out to all of our practitioners. So you'll be well, well, well supported in prayer. Uh, also, so it's midweek and you just need some kind of a spiritual reminder. We have practitioners that every week record a, um, a thought and uh, a spiritual mind treatment, so a reading and a treatment, and uh, that's the same church number, and option three gets you to dial a prayer. We'll be back here again next week, same time, same links on Zoom, and my topic will be dealing with discomfort. Ooh, I don't want... <laughs> uh, Living a Course in Miracles will be meeting tomorrow evening uh, on Zoom. This uh, is facilitated monthly by our wonderful practitioner, Jeannie Laporte, and they meet um, uh, tomorrow. We'll be meeting at uh, 7.15 to 9.15 p.m. All are welcome. And uh, again, you can just get the link for that on our website. The North Hollywood Spring concert that some people I know were not able to attend last Friday evening, you could still purchase a ticket and watch uh, the replay on Zoom. All proceeds go to supporting your church here. Um, so, you know, this was with our amazing soloists, uh, Bill A. Jones and Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen. Just really uh, such an enjoyable evening. We're so grateful to the two of them. And so just go to our website and you'll see the um, link that will take you to the page where you can purchase a ticket and that'll give you the link to watch the replay. Zoom virtual patio, so we gather on the patio before and hang out after both our Wednesday and uh, Sunday services, uh, so like 20 minutes before and however long we hang out afterwards. Um, please, if you, you know, are missing that connection with the congregation, that's a way to reconnect. Our men's group continues to meet every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 a.m. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues every Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15. All of that, you can get the information on our website where you can also sign up for uh, weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. So with that, I want to say thank you again for being with us this evening. We're just so glad you could join us and Happy St. Patty's Day one more time. I don't know, you know, I know in Ireland we say, they say uh, top of the morning to you and the uh, response is the rest of the day to you, right? What do, we, what do we do now? The top of the evening to you and the rest of the night? <laughs> the top of the evening to you, the rest of the night to you, okay. God, we're so creative here, I just like it. <laughs> With that, I say we uh, move into prayer. <laughs> So let's turn inward one more time. 
how grateful I am for all the blessings that we have received in this time together this evening. I know that God's love, God's inspiration, God's peace, God's healing presence has been present throughout and that we have each experienced the blessings that we have come to receive this evening and we carry those blessings forward into our lives. Just as our theme of, as our theme of this evening spoke to, we've gained the blessings and now we get to share them with others. And so I'm grateful, so grateful for all that has unfolded and in this state of gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. So let's join in song one more time. Rest in God.